Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video and welcome to my new garage. A little bit of a life update here. The guy that I'm renting my current house from decided that he wanted to go and sell the place and so I get to move. So in conjunction with having everything be shut down for, uh, well, you guys know, and having messed up mechanically in a probably pretty significant way, the Supra, more on that later. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a series of garage mods. I've already started ripping out this existing shelving because this is actually like right up along here and you couldn't even park another car in there, which is really inconvenient. However, we do have a lot more to do. I'm actually gonna be going and putting in a sub panel as well as a 220 right over here, both for the welder and the lift, which should be here at the end of next week. Uh, and then we're gonna go and put in some more electrical outlets because these kind of suck. Oh, and, and lighting, because that's, I, I, I don't know what that is, but that sucks. And for anybody that's been following the channel for a while, um, obviously I started out with a four car garage, uh, had three cars across a nice little tandem bay for the shop. Uh, then I went to a three car garage with like a little bit of area for the shop. And now I have this. Kind of got to work with what I got right now. Um, I will say though that this is totally worth it. Let me show you why. Look at that. That is insane. And the cool thing is that this view comes from literally every level of the house. So it's got a walkout basement, got the same views down there, you got the same view right here on the main level, uh, and then the same views upstairs from the master bedroom, which is awesome. Super pumped, so the garage thing kind of sucks. I don't know if anybody is in the Colorado Springs area and wants to go in on like some warehouse space or something like that. Um, That'd be cool. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know. I'd love to go and do that with somebody. All right, guys. So for this video specifically, we're going to be running the electrical for the lift as well as all the plugs and everything like that that we're going to do. Um, I've already got the permit and everything pulled. I did have somebody quote it just to kind of for comparison's sake. Um, the cheapest of the quotes I got was about 3,500 bucks to go and have somebody else do this. Uh, if you are proficient enough to be able to go and do electrical wiring in your household, I'm gonna be doing all of this for right around $600. Let me show y'all what all I'm thinking and then we'll go ahead and jump on in. So this right here is most of the stuff. I am still waiting on a 50 amp uh, GFCI breaker like this one specifically for specifically for my 220 outlet uh, for the lift. That should be here like Tuesday. Uh, and then I'm also waiting on the cable for the from the box of the 220 and then from this uh, breaker right here over to the sub panel. Now, before I jump into this, this has changed a little bit. Uh, for example, you'll notice that right here, it says 12 gauge wire. Um, I'm actually gonna be using. All right, so I already messed up. Just in case any of you guys are in the same boat as what I'm in, uh, I actually had to go and run back to the hardware store to get some 14.2 wiring, uh, specifically because I didn't realize at the time. Uh, 14 is obviously gonna be the gauge of the wire. And I was under the impression that numbers two and three respectively were the numbers in the loom. That is incorrect. Uh, it is basically N plus one. So for the 14-2 wiring, you have a power, a ground, and a neutral. And then for the 14-3 wiring, you have power, power, ground, neutral. Uh, the 14-3 is gonna be used for things like uh, wiring up a fan, or if you have two light switches that go and control uh, the same outlet or the same light. This is what that would be for. This is gonna be for what we're gonna be doing, which is gonna be wiring up a series of outlets uh, in the garage. So uh, this is gonna get added to the return pile. And then, uh, yeah, let's get started pulling down the wall and uh, pulling some wire. Um, and I'm gonna be running LEDs all up here. So, I mean, it's not gonna have that much pull anyway. Over here, I also changed up my gauge, gauge selection on the wires and stuff. So this isn't gonna be 100% accurate, but this will give you guys a good idea of just kind of the general layout. Uh, what we're going to be doing. All these are going to be outlets in the ceiling for the garage door lighting that I'm going to be putting in because those two incandescent bulbs suck. Uh, this right over here is going to be a switch plate and then each of these is going to have four plugs. So we got four, eight, 12, 16 plugs all along this front wall. This little grayed out section is going to be uh, workbenches and toolboxes. This grayed out section is going to be the lift. And then I'm also going to be going and putting right here along this wall, uh, those two tire racks. Coming over here, we got our main panel, and then I'm gonna be running the sub panel pretty much right next to it, run the wire over, and then probably, probably right on the other side, do the plug for the lift, just because distance-wise, it's gonna be pretty uh, pretty close proximity to the motor. Uh, and then come in downstream from here, I wanna do another set of plugs, specifically so I can go and run trickle chargers on both cars right here. Uh, and then this plug is gonna be for the garage door opener, which is this little square right here. 
Real quick before we go jumping into pulling Romex and whatever else, just please note that this is not a how to wire your garage for a lift video uh, or anything like that. This is merely me documenting the process, kind of like what all I'm doing. And the reason it's not a how-to video is because each municipality is different. So some have different restrictions for different areas. Uh, for example, in some cases, maybe you need to pull a permit, maybe you don't. Uh, in my case, I did need to go and pull a permit. That's already done. Now it's just a matter of getting everything tacked out uh, and then having the inspector come by and look at it rubber stamping it, making sure everything is good to go. And then we'll be ready to rock for a lift. So uh, if anything does come up, maybe I forgot a step, what have you, I'll definitely be documenting that as well because obviously I'm not perfect, which you guys will be seeing as soon as I go and lay into the Supra. That's enough jibber jabber though. Let's go ahead and get to work. Two hours later. All right guys, this is gonna wrap up day number one. Got a bunch of stuff done. I only really had about three hours or so to go and work on it. I did get this box installed so I can go and run uh, four plugs right there. I was gonna go and put another one in here, uh, right about here on this side, except there's already that guy right there. Tomorrow I'll be pulling this wall off and then this right here. I already got the uh, sub panel mounted. We got our box mounted for the 220 over here. We got another four plug deal right over here so I can go and run the trickle chargers. Got that one installed and we also got that guy up there. And that one, and that one, and that one. So overall, it was a pretty productive day. I uh, started super late, which is the only reason I didn't get more done. Tomorrow, we'll be able to go and get those other two walls knocked out, get the sub panel actually gone and fastened down. Then I can start pulling Romex up and through all the circuits up top in the ceiling, uh, as well as over here on this wall here, over to there. I'll also need to go and pull down this rack right here, the previous owner installed, uh, knock this guy out, pull that off. I'm gonna be doing a double switch right there for both and then i'll be knocking that guy out too because i'll be running the one for the other opener that's it i'll see you guys in a second we'll pick this up tomorrow and we're back for day two let's get rolling all right so i didn't actually plan on taking it back this far however when i went and pulled this part of the wall right here i noticed that there was no insulation on there at all and i did plan on going and insulating the entire garage just so it's nice and warm in the winter time and hopefully a little bit cooler in the summer so yeah I uh, ended up pulling the rest of the wall down, which is why we have this nice void. I will say though, that now that it's down and I notice there's no insulation in here, I might actually wind up moving the panel too. I'm gonna play around with that for a little bit, see what I come up with. All right guys, we're back for day three. Unfortunately, I didn't get as much done yesterday as what I wanted to because my like, 15 year old 12 volt snap on drill finally died uh, when I was trying to punch the holes from the main panel through these beams so I can go and run it up to the sub. Consequently, I had to go and make my third Lowe's run of the day. Uh, and I picked up one of these guys. So it's a nice little 24 volt deal. Uh, I already punched the rest of the holes that I need to punch. And uh, yeah, so we should be good to go and run some uh, wire today and hopefully get a little farther along than I have the last couple days. Let's get to it. All right, so just to give you guys kind of a quick rundown of what all we're gonna be doing. I am still waiting on the feed line that's gonna go from the main panel through the holes up over to here. And I also still need to do the clamp for this too. Um, after that, the feed is gonna get wrapped around to this part. I'm gonna be running my double pole 50 amp breaker right off of this side. And it's gonna go down here to the 220. After that, I'm gonna be running my 15 amp breakers up here, punch out a few of these knockouts at the top of the panel, run the wire up here. And for the first circuit, we're gonna be taking it from the 50 amp breaker up the ceiling and over. And then it's gonna come down here to this box. All right, and we're gonna be wiring these in parallel. So we gotta go and run one wire down and then basically another wire back up. And then that wire is gonna come over to here and land in that box right there which is gonna be for our garage door opener. All right guys, next step is gonna be running wire. Uh, we already got this unwrapped, pulled apart. So we just gotta go and run it up through the ceiling, over to the other plug and then down. I generally don't like to go through the box first and then up and over, just because sometimes it'll actually go and snag uh, on the knockouts or uh, you know just like in the plastic and stuff. So we'll save that here for just a second. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and run some wire. All right, so now that we got this coming down through the ceiling, I'm gonna go and probably pull this staple out and then run this to the box right here. And the first thing I'm gonna do before I actually start wiring any plugs, is just run all the wires, just to kind of make things simpler. Another thing to be aware of, 
I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but for Colorado at least, you gotta have this stapled once every four feet and it does have to be an insulated staple. So once I get this pulled through uh, and pulled to a length that I'm happy with, I'm gonna go back up top and then staple it in and uh, it'll go from there. All right, so this right here, we got about a foot or so sticking up out of this. And then I'm gonna shove this back up in here. Bring that over. Like I said, I'm gonna pull out this existing staple and then staple that in. And then I'm gonna go up top and add two more staples to the beams uh, here and here before running it back down to this guy and then cutting it off down there. So that's your overall process for running wire. It's super duper simple. I'm not gonna go and have you guys suffer through me running wire from these plugs over to this box and then all the way over up to and including the ceiling uh, that we're gonna be doing. So I will pick you guys back up here in, I don't know, probably about an hour or so uh, after I get done running everything together. Uh, and then I will show you the next steps. We are gonna be wiring it in parallel. So if you have no idea what that means, stick around. Um, I will tell you why I'm doing it this way and kind of what some of the benefits and stuff are. So um, yeah, give me a second. See you guys in a few. So we now have all of our wire run. Uh, we got this stuff run down through the ceiling over to the breaker box. I still need to go and wire this up. I did want to go and show you guys how we're going to be wiring the plugs though. Now I'm sorry, this is not better lit. It's probably a little bit washed out. Uh, I got all the power flipped off right now, so I can't actually turn the lights on in here. So basically what we're doing here, uh, we got our three wire nuts, we got our grounds run together, our neutral wire run together, and then our power wire run together, okay? And the reason we're doing it this way instead of just plugging them into the back of the uh, plug right here is because if you wire them like this, this is gonna be your constant power, okay? So even if maybe this plug is bad from the manufacturer or something, I'm still gonna have power going to this one and then the other one's on down the line, all right? Whereas if you go and plug it into the back of these, then the power has to go and come in one side and out the other. So if this plug were, plug were to go and die, then every single outlet past that wouldn't work. So that's what we're gonna be doing here uh, for the rest of these. We got this one mostly done. I just need to go and bolt it up into the box. And we gotta do that one, these guys over here, and then everything else up on the ceiling. But we're gonna be doing everything pretty much in that same fashion. All right, so after about another five hours of wiring, we got almost everything done. The only thing left to do is gonna be this breaker panel right here, which I'll dive into here in a second. Uh, I'm honestly really proud of how all the rest of the wiring turned out. Hopefully it passes inspection. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Let's go and get to the uh, sub panel though. This should be fun. Now we got all these clamped in up here. Um, I have the clamp installed down here for the main. And then I got this uh, 220 guy pretty much ready to go. I just need to do some stripping and stuff on this. So these are all GFCI breakers uh, for, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but at least for Colorado, you need to have GFCI outlets in the entire garage, which means Instead of getting 20 of these and installing 20 of these, I'm going at the regular plugs and installing GFCI breakers for the entire circuit. The reason I chose these is just because those plugs are like $20 a piece, whereas these breakers are about 50 a piece, but the outlets are like a dollar each. So it makes it a little bit more uh, economical. Uh, but we got all of these. These are actually super simple, all right? You just got this little, um, knuckle that goes and sits in the groove here and then clips right in real quick thing too um if you guys look right here this is my main breaker panel this thing says hom so this is an hom type breaker not all breakers are compatible with all panel types so i went out and bought a specific uh hom breaker for this particular panel here this is a square d panel whereas this one is not and I do think the HOM type breakers would work with this. However, since these are all GFCI, these are, so these are gonna be uh, QPF2 breakers. Uh, and they go, these go specifically to this panel. So just be aware whenever you're looking at breakers and stuff that you do need to go and have whatever breaker type goes with your particular box. So yeah, just be aware of that. All right, since we're doing four different circuits here, um, I'm probably just gonna go and show you guys the bottom ones because it's gonna be the easiest one to get to and then I'll go through and do the other ones really quick. Uh, and then I will do the 220 separately. So these wires right here on the end of the breaker, 
need to go and get wrapped around here. This is gonna be our neutral bar. And this is gonna be down here. This wire wouldn't get in the way, there we go. This is gonna be our ground bar, okay? So we're gonna do ground. This is gonna be power. One of these is gonna be the neutral as well. And then over here, it's gotta to attach to the neutral, okay? So let me go ahead and unwind this guy. Now, if you look right here at the breaker, all right, you see right here where it says load, this is gonna be where the power wire goes. So as this thing is sitting in there, you're gonna have the neutral wire on top, the power wire underneath. Now the goal of the panel is obviously to keep this thing as nice and neat and organized as possible. So I'm gonna take probably a little bit, <laughs> probably a little bit too long, uh, just making sure everything's nice and tidy. All right, now we got all our neutrals hooked up all the way around from the uh, GFCI breakers. So what we're gonna do, this right here uh, is gonna be for the opener plug. So that's gonna be on this far wall right here. So for this, I know sometimes you'll see guys go and cut it right up here. Personally, I like to go and start down here uh, and just peel it back. So you take a razor blade, give it a quick slice. And then, I mean, this stuff really just pulls right off after this, you know? <laughs> there we go. The reason I don't like to start up here is just because I'm always afraid I'm gonna go too far with the razor blade and wind up nicking the wire uh, and then causing myself other problems. So I like to do it this way, teach your own. I and mean, if you like to do it the other way, go nuts. All right, hopefully this gives you guys a little bit better view. I know the lighting kind of sucks is coming from over that way, but all right, starting with our ground, we're gonna go ahead and fasten this down to our ground bar. All right, so we got our ground right down here at a nice 90 degree. We're gonna do the same thing with both the power and the neutral wires coming to this breaker right here. All right, so starting with our neutral wire, go ahead and bring this down here. One thing on this stuff, just like everything else, you wanna go and give yourself more room on the wire. So I like to give myself a little bit extra room. If I need to go and cut it down more and strip some more, then I always can do that, you know? All right, neutral wire on. Then we're gonna do the same thing with our power wire, this is a black one here. And then put it right up in there. All right, so there you have our first circuit. Got it clamped in right here. We got our ground going right over here to our grounding bar. Power coming to the bottom, neutral wire coming to the top. And then we got our neutral for the GFCI wrapped right around here over to our neutral bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and bang out these other three circuits right quick, and then I'll jump over to the 220 and then show you guys how we're doing that. This right here is gonna be the mostly finished product. I went ahead and got all these circuits run. It looks, I don't know, pretty good. I'd probably do it differently if I were to go back and do it again. As you can see, I also got the main feed line run through here, down, over to the main, uh, and sticking out. I did already go ahead and plug in the ground, which is that guy right back there. Um, and then I got the neutral up here that I need to run. I did need to go over to the hardware store and see if I could find something to strip this, and I couldn't find anything that would actually go and pull off um, basically cable diameter this large. So we're gonna try the old razor blade trick and hope it works. But we'll do this here in a second. Uh, let's go ahead and knock out the 220 right here. A couple things on this guy. You can use either a plastic or a metal box on here. If you are using a metal box, it does require one of these clamps. And I highly recommend picking up a set of these uh, like spanner wrenches. Uh, they got them over at Lowe's, I think it was like six bucks. It definitely makes it a lot easier to go and tighten these down instead of trying to hit it with a uh, hammer and a flathead though. Other than that, if you look up here at the breaker, um, I don't know how well you guys can see this right here, but we got load, so this is gonna be power. It's gonna be neutral, this is gonna be power. I did opt for a 6.3 cable, so you can see in here, we got the neutral wire, we got two power wires, and the ground is kind of tucked back over here. So these are all gonna go and connect up here uh, and then run obviously down here into this box. Now the plug I got is right here. Uh, I'm gonna be using this for the lift as well as the welder. And this thing just requires two powers and a ground. So the neutral is just gonna get tucked back in here. The reason I did that is just because, I mean, if I need to upgrade to a NEMA 1450 or something later, then I'm gonna need that extra wire. Right now I don't and I can get by with just kind of leaving it tucked back in there so it's not a big deal. All right, so first thing we're gonna do on this Obviously pull back our sheathing. All right, since we only got two more things that we're gonna be grounding on this panel, uh, what I'm gonna do is take this one and run it to this uh, ground right here. 
And then for the feed, I'm gonna run that one over to here. So for these, I'm gonna start at the top one and go down. We're gonna do black, neutral, red. All right, so we already got the top power installed. We got the neutral installed on our breaker over here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this wire for you guys too. And then we're gonna go ahead and jump down to the bottom end of the box where we will go and attach it to this plug and get that situated in the box as well. So for this, I already got it bent about how I'm gonna to wanna to go and run it. As you can see, it's gonna come right up about here. So I need to cut the wire pretty much right at the base of my thumb here. I'm gonna slice that. And then, we're, and then we're gonna be extra careful with the razor blade as we're going and cutting off the insulation. Uh, you don't wanna go and push too hard because then you're actually gonna go and cut into the wire uh, and that could potentially cause it to break. Um, and obviously you don't wanna go and slip and slice your thumb open either, that would kinda suck. So if you're doing this, be careful. I'm sure there's probably a tool out there for cutting the insulation off a wire and stuff this big. I was just not able to find one. So kinda winging it, this is what we got. I like to go and kind of rock this back and forth and then loop it around to the back side. Once it's cut or at least pretty sliced, uh, you can go and take your pliers and then just kind of twist it in the same direction that the wire naturally rotates uh, and then it should just pull right off, theoretically. There we go. So that's that, now we gotta go and pull our set screw out. Once that's out, you can go and take your wire, shove it into the hole. All right, so this here is the top side of our 240. So we got our first power wire, our neutral wire, and our second power wire. The, cause this is a uh, GFCI breaker. So we got the neutral going right in here from the breaker itself. Uh, and this is going to be our ground wire coming up from this loom is gonna go immediately down, right in here. So let's go ahead and uh, get this guy wired up. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm not gonna probably film a whole lot of this, but it's literally just uh, undo these two screws. These are both a power. Put the wires in here, tighten them down. On the other side, you got this little ring right here. This is where the ground goes. So you gotta undo this screw, put the ground in there, thread it back down, and then it literally just slides right in there like that. Now. This does have the ground facing upward. I've been told it's because that way if somebody drops something metal on it, then it hits the ground first and it doesn't cause a big problem. So, um, but yeah, it should be pretty obvious. I mean, all the writing and stuff goes straight up and down. So I'm gonna wire it in right like this. So give me a second and I will uh, pick you guys up when we're about done. So I got this ready to go for the plug. And as you can see, these are both pretty short. Uh, the reason I didn't go particularly long on these is because you don't really don't have a whole lot of room to go and shove those up in there. So when they are attached, it's gonna be a pretty tight fit. I already went ahead and cut down the neutral wire, tucked that back up in here. Um, so yeah, just kind of be mindful of that. You are, pretty much what I did for this, was I went ahead and pulled them out to here and then bent them up about inch, inch and a half and then stripped uh, that last little bit so we can go ahead and uh, throw it up into the plug. But yeah, just be mindful of that. Uh, there's a very real possibility I might need to go ahead and cut these down just a little bit more in order to go and get the plug to fit back in the box of the wire. Cause I mean, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but it's gonna be pretty snug as is. And there you have it. I think overall lengthwise, that was probably the longest I would have been able to go. Uh, if that was any longer, it really would not have fit. I mean, that was a little snug. I don't know how well you can see that, but this is a little snug in it up in here, um, but it did work. So that's done. This is our 240, I think, 220, whatever it is, uh, up to this little 50 amp uh, GFCI breaker here. And now we get to go and wire up this. I'm gonna do it to the sub panel first, uh, and then we will take it over to the main box. This is gonna be the same procedure. Um, strip back the sheathing, and then we're gonna run Basically one power wire here, one power wire here, uh, the neutral here, and then we're gonna come down with the ground and wire it to this lug right here. So, pretty straightforward. And this is our finished sub panel. So we got our two hot wires, our neutral wire here, ground wire, and all the way over here. 
And for this, I'm gonna go and run the neutral wire up to this side and plug it into probably one of these right down here. The ground wire, I already went and ran up to this lug right back there. And then we need to go through and strip these two and then throw our breaker in this empty spot right here. All right, now with electrical, obviously it's super important that you not barbecue yourself. Some of you guys might be comfortable working on a hot panel. Um, honestly, I'm probably fairly comfortable with it. The main thing you gotta go and watch out for is that with the breakers on, all of the lugs that those black wires attach to are gonna be hot. So if you accidentally touch one of them, that could be a rather shocking experience for you. What I'm gonna do is flip this off. And that means all the rest of these are gonna be cold, so we're gonna be safe to work on the panel. These up here are still gonna be hot, so still don't touch those because that's coming from outside the house into the panel. So be careful still, all right? Um, I'm gonna grab our breaker and we'll get to work. When you're doing a sub panel here, I do recommend leaving yourself a little bit of extra slack. So I'm actually, you're gonna see me loop this up and around before it goes into, there we go, before it goes into the post on the breaker there. Uh, just because, I mean, if I do need to go and move this up or down or something or flip flop breakers, then you have a little bit more flexibility. Um, so that's why you're gonna see this little loop here. Highly recommended, not necessarily required, but I don't know. I'd rather have a little bit of extra flexibility if I need it down the road, you know? All right, so we got this all wired up. Got our neutral here. Got our double power here. And then our ground is gonna be this dude right up here. So, uh, moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Got this off right now. Flip that back on. Good. So now this should be live. And let's test. Let's do wall plugs first. I kind of ripped the sticker off on this one on accident, but. Okay. It should be these. We got our little circuit tester right here. It works. Cool. So this says one. Nice. Now this one does have the GFCI tester on it, so let's go ahead and push that and see if it, what happens. And it did indeed trip the breaker. Go team. Cool. We're good. All right guys, that is effectively it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. I'm gonna go through and check the rest of these circuits, uh, specifically the switches and stuff on the ceiling. Um, but yeah, so far so good, everything's working. I'm really pumped. Um, it was a lot easier than I thought it'd be, honestly. It's one of those things where, I don't know, maybe you guys struggle with this too, but it's like, I'll go and I'll know how to do something and it's just like getting that mental self-confidence to actually go out and do it that I struggle with. So I don't know. But anyway, um, that was a lot of fun. Had a blast. Total project time. And this is me kind of fumbling through it a little bit and kind of gaining some of that self-confidence that I was talking about. Um, total project time was about 20 hours. So I think for an experienced electrician or somebody that does this all the time, you'd be able to go and bang it out a lot faster. But I don't know. Overall, I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with how it turned out. Uh, now I get to go and put in a request for the inspector to come out. He's going to go and look at it, hopefully give everything a thumbs up. I'll keep you guys in the loop with, uh, as far as that goes. Just if there is an update, if there is something else I need to do or tweak, um, I will have that in my pricing video, uh, which I'll be doing at the end of this little string. That's it. Hope you guys liked it. I will see you all very soon in the next video. Catch you next time.